Hello students, this is Pathology, Chapter 7, Part 1. Neoplasia. Neoplasia is a new growth where the cells exhibit uncontrolled proliferation. A neoplasm is a new growth of tissue in which growth is uncontrolled and progressive. Tumor means swelling, but is often used as a synonym for neoplasm. In order for a neoplasia to occur, an irreversible change must take place in the cells. This change must then be passed on to new cells and result in uncontrollable cell multiplication. It is an abnormal process. Many agents have been shown to cause neoplastic transformation of cells in the laboratory. There are hundreds of different chemicals, oncogenic viruses, and radiation such as sunlight, x-rays, and nuclear fission. It can also occur spontaneously as a result of a genetic mutation. Tumors are classified as benign or malignant. Benign tumors or neoplasias remain localized. They may be encapsulated with fibrous connective tissue or they can invade adjacent tissues but do not have the ability to spread to distant sites. Malignant tumors, however, invade and destroy surrounding tissues and have the ability to spread throughout the body. Benign tumors almost always resemble normal tissues. Malignant tumors vary in histologic appearance. Well differentiated malignant tumors have neoplastic cells that resemble normal cells. Poorly differentiated ones do not. Others may be undifferentiated or anaplastic and do not resemble the tissue from which they were derived at all. Pleomorphic tumors. These are tumors where the cells often vary in size and shape. Hyperchromatic tumors have nuclei that are darker than those of normal cells and exhibit an increased nuclear to cytoplasmic ratio. See Table 7-2 in your book for more information. Names of tumors. The prefix is determined by the tissue or cell of origin. The suffix OMA is used to indicate a tumor. Benign tumors. A lipoma indicates a benign tumor of fat. An osteoma, a benign tumor of bone. The naming of malignant tumors. Carcinoma is a malignant tumor of epithelium. Sarcoma is a malignant tumor of connective tissue. A squamous cell carcinoma or epidermoid carcinoma is a malignant tumor of squamous epithelium. An osteosarcoma is a malignant tumor of bone. Benign tumors are treated by surgical excision, either a wide local excision or enucleation if they are encapsulated. Malignant tumors are treated by surgery, chemotherapy or radiation therapy, and often a combination. There are three different types of epithelial tumors found in the oral cavity. From squamous epithelium, from salivary gland epithelium or from odontogenic epithelium. Tumors of squamous epithelium include papilloma, premalignant lesions, squamous cell carcinoma, verrucous carcinoma, and basal cell carcinoma. 
A papilloma is a benign tumor of squamous epithelium. It is a small, exophytic, pedunculated, or sessile growth. It may be white or the color of normal mucosa. It is most often found on the soft palate or the tongue. Microscopically, you see numerous finger-like or papillary projections with a central core of fibrous connective tissue surfaced by normal stratified squamous epithelium. The treatment is surgical excision. Premalignant le lesions are leukoplakia, erythroplakia, and epithelial dysplasia. Leukoplakia means white plaque. Biopsy is necessary to establish a definitive diagnosis. Most are due to hyperkeratosis or epithelial hyperplasia and hyperkeratosis. Microscopically, it may show epithelial disp dysplasia, a premalignant condition, or even squamous cell carcinoma. The treatment depends on the histologic findings. Normally, the cause is removed to see if it resolves, and if not, the lesion should be biopsied. This is an Im image of tobacco pouch keratosis. Erythroplakia, an oral mucosal lesion appearing as a smooth red patch or a granular red and velvety patch. Speckled leukoplakia is a lesion that shows a mix of red and white areas. They are most often located on the floor of the mouth, the tongue, and the soft palate. Erythroplakia is less common than leukoplakia. Epithelial dysplasia is a histologic diagnosis of a premalignant condition. It indicates a disordered growth. These lesions frequently precede squamous cell carcinoma. The changes may revert to normal if the cause or stimulus is removed. Clinically, epithelial dysplasia may present as an erythematous lesion, a white lesion, or as a mixed erythematous and white lesion. Lesions often arise on the floor of the mouth or the tongue. Dysplasia in other tissues is not considered a premalignant process. Microscopically, one would find abnormal maturation of epithelial cells with disorganization of epithelial layers, hyperplasia of basal cells, and epithelial cells with enlarged and hyperchromatic nuclei, increased nuclear to cytoplasmic ratios, abnormal keratinization, and increased no numbers of normal and abnormal mitotic figures. Carcinoma in situ is a severe dysplasia involving the full thickness of the epithelium. It is treated with surgical excision. Squamous cell carcinoma is also known as epidermoid carcinoma. It is a malignant tumor of squamous epithelium, the most common primary malignancy found in the oral cavity. It can infiltrate adjacent tissues and form distant metastases. It usually metastasizes to lymph nodes in the neck and then to distant sites, such as the lungs and the liver. Clinically, it usually is an exophytic ulcerative mass. It can infiltrate and destroy bone. Here are some images of squamous cell carcinoma. Tumor cells invade connective tissue underlying the epithelial basement membrane. Well differentiated tumors will show keratin. Keratin pearls can be visible microscopically. Squamous cell carcinoma 
occurs most often on the floor of the mouth, ventral lateral tongue, soft palate, tonsillar pillar, and retromolar areas. It may also occur on the vermilion border of the lips and skin of the face. These locations have a better prognosis than squamous cell carcinoma of the oral mucosa. Solar chylitis is a condition in which mild to severe epithelial dysplasia occurs. A patient should be advised to avoid sun exposure and use a sun blocking agents. See the image on the right with the black arrow pointing to it. Risk factors for squamous cell carcinoma are tobacco smoking, snuff dipping, tobacco chewing, alcohol consumption, damage from ultraviolet rays, and human papillomavirus. See Table 7.3 in your textbook for more information. Treatment and prognosis for squamous cell carcinoma. It is generally treated by surgical excision. Radiation therapy or chemotherapy may also be used, and these patients may end up with xerostomia. TNM staging may be used to determine the prognosis. The higher the stage, the worse the prognosis. This concludes Pathology, Chapter 7, Part 1.